Well, good morning. And it is a <laughs> it is a wonderful morning indeed. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm chapter eight. O Lord, our Lord. How majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. And when I look at your heavens and the work at your fingers and the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you care for him? And yet you have made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. And you have given him dominion over your works and your hands. And you've put all these things under his feet. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather here together to worship you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that our hearts and minds would be attuned to you, that we would put aside the worries and cares of the world in focusing on worshiping you in word and in song and in your truth. Amen. Our opening hymn is 174. be seated. We would like to welcome our guests today that are visiting us as well as those in Elmcrest. It's a joy to have you worship with us. A few announcements and calendar events. First of all, there is a um, a, a council meeting tomorrow at 6.30. So note the time change on that. Usually it's at 7, but tomorrow night it'll be at 6.30. Also, Um, on Tuesday, this Tuesday, December 5th, there will be communion up at Elmcrest. And for those that are in the assisted living, 
So you guys are welcome to join us, um, Dane and I, as we will be having communion at Elmcrest Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. A uh, little change in my schedule this week. I will be here um, in New Salem through Thursday, and then I will be gone Friday, Saturday, but we'll be back, of course, Sunday and Monday and Tuesday of the following week. Um, I'm enjoying getting to meet many of you, and I look forward to continuing to do so. And if there would be like any visitations, just feel free to give the church a call or talk to me. And uh, I've been busy doing that, and that's been a real joy to me. Also, uh, an announcement that confirmation will be starting Jan Sunday, January 7th. It's going to be an abbreviated form of confirmation with uh, Confirmation Sunday, looking like it's going to be on Mother's Day, May 12th, but we'll talk about that uh, at the council meeting tomorrow night. And uh, so it's going to be an abbreviated version. I'm in the process of, of putting together what that would look like. I think it's going to be an ex um, I'm looking forward to an exciting time with the youth with that. We're going to be covering um, lots of different topics about who God is and who Jesus is. Of course, our our sin and our need of a savior but we'll be looking at other things as well as our who we are in Christ our identity in Christ and as a believer in Christ that we are new people a new creation we'll be looking at um, how to um, answer and, and thoughts about is God real something called apologetics and defending the faith we'll be talking about what the church is in our Christian service We'll be talking about the importance and the call to prayer, and we'll be talking about Christian family and faith. And so these are just some of the topics that I'm putting together for that. Please be in prayer for our, our students and myself. As we put this together, we want this to be a God-glorifying time of getting to know him and to confirm our faith in who he is and, and our love for him and what he has done for us. Let's see, any other announcements? I have a couple announcements. On Wednesday night, uh, right after school, I will be here to work with grades three through six for their program next week. We will have some treats and snacks, and it shouldn't, you know, if we start right away after school, kids come over, we should be done by 4.15. And then on Saturday morning, we have a big kids practice at 10 o'clock, and it will be upstairs, um, and there will be light snacks, and that will be for pre through grade six on Saturday morning, and next week is our kids program. Good morning. We still have a few tags left for gifts for Elmcrest, so if anyone is yet to shop or would be interested in, in helping with that, um, if you'd like to grab a gift tag, they are out below the telephone in the atrium. If you don't have time to shop but you would still like to support, we would love for you to donate anything you'd like to the Board of Christian Ed, and we will do your shopping for you. So our plan is to um, prepare all of the gifts, and then we will be delivering them on the 19th. On the afternoon of the 19th, all are invited to join, excuse me, the 17th, all are invited to join us for Christmas caroling at 3 o'clock. We'll start here at the church and grab all of the gifts. We'll take them up to Elmcrest and sing, and then we'll be singing around town. And we'll end back at the church around 5 with hot cocoa and some supper. All right, thank you. Any birthdays today or this week? Macy's birthday, and then I heard somebody out there. Who else? We have Macy, and what was the other one? I'm sorry? Okay. <laughs> All right. Anybody else? All right, let's sing happy birthday. Right. Well, 
let's stand and greet one another.
Today we will light the hope candle. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who soar on the wings like eagles, eagles, they will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Isaiah 40, 31. Hope looks to God and waits on him with a firm expectation. He will fulfill fill his promises. Allied with hope are the ideas of faith and patience, endurance and trust, of joy and a settled peace that God will do what he says he will do. Israel has been beaten down by a succession of world powers, Babylon, Persia, the Greeks, and now Rome. In their distress, they call out, Come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel. Yet in the cry, there is hope, a strong expectation that God will keep his promises to send a Messiah, a deliverer. The hope is fulfilled on the first Christmas day when Jesus is born in Bethlehem. God's Savior sent to planet Earth to save us from our sins and deliver us from whatever oppresses us. People live in hope of one who can help them. Jesus is that person present today by the Holy Spirit to deliver us from any need. He is the one we hope for. Let's pray. Father, thank you for sending Jesus into our world, our hope of glory, our blessed hope of resurrection and eternal life. In his name we pray, amen. All right, thank you. Let's sing the candle praise song. be seated. Before we go to the Lord in prayer this morning, I would just ask um, if there's any uh, additions to our prayer list this morning. I brought this up before about Mrs. Beckman. Um, Mr. Beckman had his procedure done, heart stuff, whatever. We've got so much heart stuff going on, but he's doing well, I understand. And now Mrs. Beckman, I don't know how many of you have been in, involved with her lately, but she, she's lost her voice. It's her speaking voice. She whispers all the time. And they believe that, that uh, what happened was during her um, cancer that time, something obviously went wrong or something like that. So she has a doctor who's going to do a procedure. She's very excited about it. 
And I believe the date is December 15th, so that is coming up. So, so keep her in your prayers that she stays well in between here and so forth. So um, I just wanted to tell you all that because I know that most of you know her and we'll pray for her. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there any update on uh, Peggy Tepke? I haven't heard anything. Um, um, apparently, uh, we were told last week that um, she is in hospice. Um, some of you may remember um, Hanky, um, Kenny Hanky's wife, Audrey. She worked at um, Elmcrest for many years, and when she would be with um, individuals who find themselves in Peggy's situation, she would always say that they have one foot in heaven. Um, so, um, truly, Peggy has one foot in heaven. <laughs> I need to... Jenny Danielson spoke with me a little bit this morning, and we need to lift up um, their daughter, Sistine. Sistine is in the hospital this morning, um, and um, she will be, come, be returning uh, home to her apartment here sometime this week. But I just, uh, I, we need to lift up Sistine in our prayers that uh, God would grant her um, a peace of mind and a, and a peace of heart. Okay. For those that don't know her or remember her, she's the one that played our, our drums all the time. Yes, yes. Do they remember that way? I guess uh, going along with that thought of, of a peace of mind, um, I was reading this morning, uh, thinking about what I might say this morning, and I, I was reading in, in the book of Luke, in the second chapter, verse 14, and, and it was right after um, our Savior was born, when the angels appeared to the shepherds, and they were so afraid. And it's a very familiar phrase or verse. You'll 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 know it. Um, it reads, "Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased." Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, um, we are in the Advent season, Father. Um, the birth of our Savior Jesus. Father, forgive me, but um, when you made man, um, we have to wonder why. Father, you, you are holy. You live in a perfect, perfect kingdom. And you knew that man would be nothing but trouble. Father, you knew that you would have to send your son to to be born, to die, and to be resurrected again. Father, we thank you for that. Father, in our minds, truly, a lot of this doesn't make any sense. But Father, um, in your mind, it makes perfect sense. And we thank you, Father. I just pray that your will would always be done, your holy, precious will. Father, I, I pray uh, this morning that you would bring peace, peace, peace uh, during this Advent season to our world, uh, to our community, Father, and especially to hearts and minds, Father, that they would find peace and comfort and healing 
um, in knowing that you love them, Father, and that Jesus sacrificed himself for all of us on the cross. We thank you for that, Father. We want to lift up a number of individuals again this morning. Father, we pray for, for Dale and Joanne Beckman. Father, we just pray for healing there. We pray for David and Sharon Tepke as well. Father, um, and all those uh, who are recovering from surgeries and, and illnesses, Father, we just pray for healing for all of our Peace Church family here and, and those in our community. We pray all these things in the precious name of our Savior Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Heavenly Father, uh, we do give thanks this morning, Father, for, for all the blessings in our lives, Father, financial, emotional, um, whatever it might be, Father, the blessings that you bestow upon us, we thank you for them, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. Please rise for our offertory response. your Bibles today to the book of Colossians. And we'll be looking at Colossians 1. And I'll be reading 15 through 20. The preeminence of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him for, for, and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. 
And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of, cro- of the cross. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you uh, for your word, and we thank you, Lord, that you are preeminent over all things, that you are the creator of all things, that you have dominion over all things, even over all the things that we have just been praying about that are on our concerns and on our lists of, of concerns. We give you thanks and praise for that. And so, Father, Lord, as we look at your word today and we think about Advent and the coming weeks ahead of us, may our hearts and affections be turned towards you. And, Lord, that we would go ahead in this time here, that the words that are said would not be of man, but would reflect you and your glory and honor. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, as Dana has mentioned, and as all of you know, thank you for the youth, by the way, for participating in the Advent. That was wonderful. This is Advent season. And along with it, Christmas is coming. And Christmas will be here before we know it. This is a special time of year in particular for all of us, but for my wife and I, it's even a little bit more special. And that is that we we just celebrated our 31st wedding anniversary, and we were married right here, of all places, at Peace Church. And we have beautiful memories of that weekend. It was a Friday after Thanksgiving, and uh, we, we spent some time this last Monday evening going through some of the traditions that we've developed over the years. And so on the night of our anniversary, we always set up the Christmas tree and decorated for Christmas. And so Monday night, my wife said, we're going to decorate tonight. And I said, yes, we will. (laughs) And so we got out the tree and everything, and she says, you know what, this year we're going to put up all the ornaments this year. And I said, all the ornaments? And she said, yes, all the ornaments. Like when our kids were little and everything, yes, all the ornaments. And so here we are, she's pulling out all these different ornaments, and we have four kids, and it was of their first Christmas, and their second Christmas, and their third Christmas, and you know, on and on and on. And, and then all the little ornaments that they had when they were in school, or they made in Sunday school. And one of my favorites was actually when they were um, in second grade. And they made these ornaments and colored them out of just construction paper or some kind of a, a hard paper and inserted inside the ornament was their second grade picture without their two front teeth. <laughs> it was during the course of that evening, of course, in celebration of our anniversary that we shared and reminisced about the 31 years of God's faithfulness to us in our marriage. The blessings, the laughter, the tears, and all the things, as my wife would say, as we are dancing through life together. And then she made this comment at the very end. And the best is yet to come. And I said, Amen. Amen to that. And then thinking about this Advent season, that's what it's about. (laughs) It's about looking back and celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ and looking forward to the best that is yet to come. His second coming, his coming back for us, when he will make everything anew for us. We look forward to that. But right now, we're caught in what's called the between time. (laughs) We're in waiting. And the problem is that during this waiting period, I don't know about you, but I can become easily distracted. I can become hijacked by the secularization and of this season. I can be overcome with, with looking at and being partaking and looking forward to all the great activities, which we all should do and partake in. There are good things. 
But sometimes I go ahead and I look forward to it too much. And let me explain what that means. Because when we put our hope and joy and peace and love in the things of this world, eventually it's going to crumble. It is only going to disappoint us. And this is common, I think, for all of us to different degrees and under certain different circumstances and that we can become distracted and we can lose our anchor or put our anchor in a thousand different false hopes that the world offers us. I might get myself in a little bit of trouble, at least with my wife, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyway, and she loves Hallmark Christmas movies. There is something about escaping into that different world where somehow in the end, everything will miraculously come together. And wouldn't you know it happens to be on Christmas. And what really is amazing to me and in those settings is how does that snow fall on Christmas Day without a 40 mile an hour wind and sub-zero temperatures? It just blows my mind. But somehow everything miraculously turns out. But the truth of the matter is, sometimes the holidays can be very difficult. They can be very painful seasons in people's lives. In fact, I was just talking to a friend of mine last night, and he says, this is my worst time of year. It's been 22 years when his brother passed away, and he says, my parents and I, we just can't get over it. We sat together and we prayed, and this is a very difficult time for them. And maybe this year can be fit, was, you had some trials and hardships and loss of loved ones. And putting it in the old, one of my old uh, holiday classics, It's a Wonderful Life, the movie, sometimes we go through what I call Pottersville experiences. They can be hard. And it's in those times where we can either really lean into Christ or lean away from him. And it's by the grace of God that we can orient our, reorientate ourselves back and center and anchor ourselves in Jesus Christ. His birth, his life, the resurrection, and the second coming. It is those things that we get to feast upon and celebrate that will sustain us. To put our anchor in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And today, in this Colossians passage, you might be saying, what does that have to do with Advent? It has to do with the glory of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you have time to look back at that but it talks about the preeminence and glory of who he is. And during Advent, that is what we get to celebrate as part of it. Because during these four weeks, we get to celebrate hope. And we all know that hope is not dependent upon certain feelings or circumstances, but instead it's the expectation of the coming good based upon the person and work and the promises of Jesus Christ. That kind of biblical hope carries absolutely no doubt to it. It is something we can put our anchor in. Jesus becomes then the object of our hope. And we can so easily lose sight of it and put an object of the hope in so many of the worldly things that catch our attention and grab it. But think about this for just a moment. Think about the treasure that he looks upon us in the sense that he sent his son. Our father sent his son to live this life and to die for our sins. For somebody who absolutely doesn't deserve it whatsoever. He must really value and treasure us in that way. And so how with that excessive value and worth that we are to our Lord, that we cannot look to him as our hope, that we can put our value of him and what he has done for us so graciously, so costly, that we can put our anchor 
in him because he is our hope. And so then we also get to celebrate peace. And we all know that the Jews were looking for a Messiah that would be a military conqueror. Someone who would go ahead and conquer the Romans and put away the harshness and the harsh living and the, all the things that they had to live under the persecution under the Roman Empire. They were looking for a strong warrior to establish peace through war and military victory. And Jesus was none of that. He was the Messiah that was meek and humble, and he fought a different war. He wasn't militaristic in taking up arms. Instead, he gave his life for us. He was a righteous man that gave his life for the unrighteous person. He was the Lamb of God. And so this peace was different. This peace was given so that we would be whole and complete and saved from our sins. The death on the cross, for he was fully God and fully man. He was incarnate, which is a sermon in of itself. He made peace between us and a holy, perfect God. His wrath had to be atoned for from our, from our sin. And so seeing that need, he sent his son, and his son willfully came for us and made peace with God. And so we can have peace in our hearts for what he has done. And then we celebrate joy, and joy is different from happiness. Happiness is fragile, it's fleeting, it's also circumstantial. I can be happy about the fact that we don't have snow yet this winter. But will I be unhappy when it finally does? We try to build our happiness on various different things and it will all, like everything else, collapse if it's the things of the world. But in Luke 2, Scripture says, Joy is the coming of Jesus Christ. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. And today in the house of David... A Savior has been born to you, and he is the Messiah. He is the Lord. And this good news of great joy will be for all people. The joy is that he is our Savior. And the Savior means he is the one who rescues us. He rescues us and saves us from terrible calamity that we cannot begin to do on ourselves. He delivers us and he helps us in our great times of need. And so what does he rescue us from? Our miserable sin and eternal damnation. I like what Ephesians 2 says, For you were dead in your transgressions and sins, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive. Totally. Made us alive. In Colossians 1.13, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom and the son of God who loves us in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins we have joy great joy through Jesus Christ and then we get to celebrate love the most perfect form of love it's the great love of agape love it's a love we get to celebrate it is unconditional with no if ands or buts about it no uh, contingencies. It is an undeserved kind of love that has no personal merit that you or I could afford to give on our behalf to deserve that love. And it's the kind of love that comes with an incredible price. And even when we are to show that to one another, the price might be an incredible amount of time as one person said, it's like hooking up your veins to somebody who is in need and giving yourself in love towards them in their time of need. And for Jesus Christ, it was laying down his life for us. To lose a life in order that we would have life. In John 
1 John 4.10, he says, In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be propitiation for our sins. And so in defining love, we need to look towards God and not man. Love is defined by sending the eternal Son of God to this earth to fulfill the mission that he sent them to do. John 3.16, our familiar passage, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. But 17 is something we always tend to forget. 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. And that is his love. And it's those things that we get to put, that we are to put our hope and our peace and our joy and our love in. So the question is, in the midst of, of chaos, in the midst of exciting things during this time of year, what are the things that distract us that we may put our anchor in during this time of year? What are the things that maybe you find yourself totally immersed with? All the thousands of different kinds of distractions that are going on. And don't get me wrong, these, some of these things are they're good things, but if we are putting our anchor into those things, it will only disappoint us. If we're only looking into a, uh, an anchor of everything to turn out like a Hallmark Christmas movie, we will be disappointed. But our hope is in a foretaste of what is to come. We get to experience that right now. And for those of you who are maybe going through a very difficult season this year, or maybe every time at this time of year, lean into Christ. Lean into his hope that he has given us. Lean into the peace that he has given us through Jesus Christ. The joy that we can have that through his love that we get to spend eternity and look forward and anticipate the future coming. Invite him, lean into him, and he will show you his love. And my prayer for each one of us during this season is that we would reflect more deeply, maybe perhaps differently, that we would put our focus and attention and our anchor in Christ this Advent season. For this season is not just about celebrating his first arrival and looking forward to his second arrival. It's all of that and the fact of what he did for us on the cross. It's celebrating what he did for us on the cross that we have these things to look forward to. And so as a result, may we see him as the most valuable object of our affections. May we seek him in that. And so that this season, we would worship him daily in our hearts and minds for what he has provided for us. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for who you are and what you have done for us. And forgive us, Lord, for being so easily distracted and putting our hope and our love and our joy and our peace in things of this world. That instead, Lord, that you would draw our hearts to us, that you would show us in our hearts and minds where we fall into these things, that we would confess them, repent of them, and turn our hearts towards you, singing praise in all these glorious hymns that we get to sing this time of year. Joy to the world, peace on earth, and goodwill to men. And Father, Lord, that through this time and beyond, that you would comfort those who are hurting, 
that they would, you would draw them into yourself, that they would know that your comfort and love during this season. And Father, Lord, we pray these things in your glorious name, that you would receive the glory and honor in all things. Amen. Our closing hymn is 190, Angels from the Realms of Glory. And now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with love by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.